Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Hi, welcome to Art Starts Explores. This month we're going to be exploring the theme of tracing. My name is Kay Slater and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in schools. And for the next month we're going to be trying out different ways of using tracing in our art making and exploration. This week, what I thought we would look at is exploring this idea of something being the same, but being a little bit different. So by that, what I mean is, is that we're going to trace different things to be the start of an idea or the start of our exploration. Rather than having to have a blank page that we're looking at, we're going to start with a picture or an idea or an image that was created before, either by someone else or even by ourselves and then building out from that original um, picture. Before we get started, I wanted us to think about how tracing is a form of copying. Copying isn't a bad thing. It's a bad thing if we um, lie and pretend like when we are copying somebody else's work and pretending like it's our work. That's, that's lying, that's not respecting other people's work. But the skill that is taking an idea or taking a picture or an image and being able to duplicate it or transfer it into another surface isn't necessarily bad. What's important is thinking about our intentions, what we mean to do by an action. In this space, uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to explore without keeping anything. Nothing is for keeps. And so we don't have to really worry about anything that we make today uh, being disrespectful to somebody else who drew something because we're going to get rid of it at the end of this making session. And so we don't really have to worry about copying. If we were copying somebody else's picture and then we signed our name at the bottom of it and told somebody that we had come up with the idea without crediting or without getting permission from the thing that we um, are tracing from, then that would, be, that would be a problem. But here and now, while we're just practicing this skill of tracing, we don't really have to worry about being disrespectful while we are learning how to copy. So with that in mind, let's explore the same, but different. I've gathered a couple of things um, 
to explore tracing with you this week. If you want to make along with me, do you have a light box or a window or some tracing paper? I'm going to start with the window. If you have a window that faces out to the light, what you can do is, is you can actually take your piece of paper and you can stick it onto the window. Um, and then the light of the sun behind the window um, allows it for uh, an easier transfer of the image onto your page. This is a nice, easy, free way of making a light box. You don't have to be fancy. You can just take some regular old computer paper, take the picture that you want to copy, tape it up on the window, put your piece of paper on top of it, and then the sun will shine through the picture and will make it easier for you to be able to see the image that you're going to trace. So if you have a window, you can totally practice tracing by taping up your images on the window. Tracing paper is a specific kind of paper that is something called translucent. Translucent means that it, the light can actually go through the page um, easier than say a paper like this, which is a li little bit more opaque. It's harder for you to see the image underneath. It's a, it's, I guess a, another way of saying it could be about thickness, but it's more about how easy it is for the light to transfer through the page. That's why we would stick our picture onto the window. So if you had some tracing paper or some vellum paper, you could use that. I don't have a window in my space. I also don't have any tracing paper, but what I do have is a light box. So I'm going to pull that out and get that all ready. So this is a light box that I have in my studio, and there is a light inside um, this, this metal box. So I can turn on the light, and there you go. And so it glows. And so just like the sun behind uh, a window pane, it creates this light so that if I was going to take the picture that I wanted to draw, you can see the light is, is easier. It's, it's uh, more easily coming through the page now so that when I put my other paper on top, I can see the image a lot clearer than I could without the light. Let's keep going. So that's what I'm gonna use this week, but you can use whatever you want. You might have another idea of ways to trace. Do you have some paper? And so I have some paper that I took out of my recycling bin. I have a couple of different kinds of paper here. I have some packing paper that's wrinkled. Um, as I said, I've got some paper that got put into my recycling box. And then I've got this really thick paper here um, that the light really doesn't transfer through, but I wanted to see if I could test it on my light box. But any kind of paper will do. Remember, nothing that we're making this week is for keeps. And so any kind of paper that you can find in the recycling box, it's gonna be great. And then finally, some mark making tools because we need to be able to trace. If you don't have any mark making tools, you could absolutely trace by just using your finger. Remember one of the things that I was talking about um, when we are doing tracing is that it is a skill. And so the skill is about deep looking. It's about looking at how somebody drew a picture or made a picture the first time. And so even just by using your fingers and concentrating where your fingers are, what do you notice? What do you see? This can be just as important and just as fulfilling as doing it with a pen or pencil because you have to focus where your fingers are. You can't be thinking about this part of the picture while you are watching um, your finger move across a page. You can also be noticing things about your paper as your, uh, as your finger moves across the surface. So that's what I'm going to be making with today. I also found a, um, a window from one of my envelopes in my recycling bin. And I wanted to um, pull this out because you probably will find some of these in your recycling bin as well. And these are kind of like a window. And remember, somebody's already um, 
thrown this out. They've already put it into a recycling bin. And so you don't have to worry about marking this up. If you have a marker or a pen, you absolutely could use the window envelope as a way to trace your image. And there's no reason why you couldn't glue this onto a, to another surface. Or when you're done tracing, take this over to the window and put it behind another piece of paper. Just gonna quickly draw an outline here. All right, there we go. And so you don't have a window, you don't have a light box, you don't have some tracing paper, you could absolutely go into your recycling bin and grab um, a window from an envelope and rip that out and then use that as your tracing paper. All right, I'll put that to the side. All right, so what I did was I went on the internet and I grabbed a, a picture. Um, in this case, because I am taking a video and I'm sharing this video, I wanted to be respectful and use a picture that I had permission to use. And so this picture drawn by Sir John Tenniel is the illustrator who drew the Alice in Wonderland um, illustrations in the original John, um, Lewis Carroll um, book back in the 19, I think the 1920s. And so because this book is now in uh, the public domain, and so are these illustrations, uh, I can use this and I can share this image uh, without being uh, disrespectful to the uh, rules around who owns this picture. But remember, you have permission to use whatever you're going to be tracing in your space as long as you're not using it for keeps. We're just trying things out this week. And so one of the really cool things about tracing is it lets you do, or it lets you um, ask questions about what if. So what if you were going to draw or trace this whole picture out, um, but you weren't gonna trace um, Alice's dress? Uh, what if Alice wore overalls? Or what if Alice had bunny ears? Or what if what's behind the curtain here isn't a door? And we can play what if by tracing some of the details really quickly onto different surfaces. And then we can try out the what if um, once we're done tracing. So I'm gonna quickly trace um, the Alice shape. Um, a couple of times onto another piece of paper. And then we can play what if with the uh, tracings that I've done in the blank spaces and the places where I don't trace. So I'm gonna turn off my voice for a little bit. I'm gonna turn down the light and I'm gonna quickly trace um, a couple of versions of Alice onto my page. Let's go.
Okay. So what do you notice? I'm going to bring out the picture that I originally drew. What do you notice about my tracing? Or if you traced a picture, what do you notice about what you trace? Did you find yourself paying attention to certain things and not paying attention to other things? Did you copy it exactly? Did you go fast or slow? What did you notice? For me, what I notice is that I'm using a, uh, a different pen, right? I'm using a Sharpie and um, um, Sir Tenier would have uh, been using probably a fountain pen or um, pen and ink for, uh, for this drawing. And so my drawing ends up being pretty light. I didn't copy it exactly. I didn't go very slow. I went very fast, both because I wanted to be able to get it quickly down on the page and it's not for keeps, so I don't really need to spend a lot of time getting it onto the page. But also I wanted to explore what if, and so I only wanted to grab marks or ideas from this page that would start out my idea. I didn't want to be stuck tracing exactly the same thing because I could have just colored in this page if I just wanted to um, do the exact same picture. What I'm wanting to do is I want to use this as the start of my idea. And so I didn't color in everything. I didn't exactly color in the shoes, my hash marks for um, the, the cross hatching for the shadows isn't as dark. Um, I didn't copy every single line in Alice's dress. The hair isn't exactly the same, but you can basically tell that this was traced from this picture. But what I have the freedom to do now is that while this picture inspires me to start, yes, I'm not gonna use my marker. I'm gonna use a pencil crayon instead. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use purple so that it's nice, it's a bit dark so you can see it. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it so that what um, Alice is actually doing is instead of pulling back a curtain, what she's got is this. Right? What is Alice doing? Alice is folding laundry. Because of how Alice's picture or hands were held, right? Because um, in the original picture, she's, uh, she's pulling back fabric. I use that to think about, oh, what about, what if she's folding fabric? What if she's holding fabric um, and she's outside and she's uh, taking laundry off of a clothesline? So by taking the figure here, I was able to create a whole new scene. I didn't have to worry about being good at drawing um, bodies or humans. I was able to just go, no, I want a picture of a person who's standing there or a young girl who's standing there. And then I want to imagine what else she could be doing in that space. And I could draw this exact figure of Alice being bent over like this multiple times on multiple pages and see how many different places I could take Alice besides Wonderland and her little door here just by using that picture, just by tracing that one piece from, um, from this original picture. You may have noticed that I also traced Alice again on the other side of the page. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to be able to use all of this space over here. So what do you notice about how I traced this one? I'm going to bring this one back up here. What do you notice? Well, the first thing that I notice is that Alice is looking in the opposite direction. And the reason was, was because the light box that I'm using is so bright and because the light is pushing through all the places that there where there are, um, there are marks on the page, the light can't get through as easily. So I was able to actually flip over my page so that you can kind of see now. Turn my light box back on. There. 
So you can see Alice is now facing in the other direction. So if you had a picture that you really wanted to trace, but you wanted the figure to be facing in another direction, you could just flip over the page and now they're, they're uh, in the other direction. And so you could draw it like that. And so that's what I did. I decided I would draw um, Alice facing in this direction. What else? What else do we notice? Well, uh, I decided that I didn't want to draw Alice um, necessarily in a dress. So I kept Alice's apron here, but I didn't draw the big skirt. I kept almost everything else the same. The arms are still in the same position. The hair is still flowing down. They're still, um, she's still looking away. Um, and, and she's still got her shoes. I didn't fill in the shoes all the way either because I wasn't sure if that's where uh, I was going to have the shoes fall. But what I was thinking is, is that um, instead I could just bring the legs up here, bring the cross hatching all the way down, make it dark on the leg, bring this over here so that Alice's leg comes up here, and then instead go, well, maybe Alice is just wearing pants. Put a little pocket in the back here. Let's put a pocket just like apron because who couldn't use more pockets and there we go so now underneath that that, uh, that apron there Alice is wearing pants so just by eliminating some of these things but by keeping all the, these things here I was able to really change um, what Alice is wearing and it does end up looking quite different um, from what Alice has here but now that Alice is in pants and wearing this what else do I want uh, to have here. I think what I want is to uh, still use the shape of the hands. I really like how these hands are shaped because they look like they're active, right? Alice is originally holding the key and Alice is pulling back the curtain here, but now I can really focus on these hands and go, well, obviously these hands are doing something. What are they doing? All right, so what is Alice doing? I decided that Alice was out in the garden, that this hand looked like um, it was holding a garden hose. And so there's my garden hose that comes off from the side. Maybe uh, instead, Alice is wearing gardening shoes, so a pair of Crocs. go. And so Alice is out in the garden watering the plants. Alice needs to turn off the water because it's getting intense in here. There you go. Right? Filled up the watering can, um, has the, the hose still on, and is out in the garden. And so by taking just the pieces that I wanted, I was able to say, what if Alice was in pants um, out in the garden? What if um, Alice was folding laundry, right? What would it look like? What if? And so um, I don't have to trace all of it, but I also don't have to start from scratch. Maybe I don't have an idea. Maybe I know I want to draw something. I want to, to make some marks, but I don't know where to start. Tracing is a great way to start with an idea and go from there and not really worry about it being good or bad. It allows you to just quickly go, well, what I, do I want to draw laundry? Do I want to draw fabric? Do I want to draw somebody um, doing laundry? Maybe not, no. Instead, I want to draw uh, someone out in the garden. Yeah, that feels better, I like this better. And so now from this tracing here, I could go off and I could draw my own version of this picture using this as a reference, knowing that this person is bent over like this, there's their body, there's their arm, it's the same. Their arm needs to come out here and there's their hand, there's their hand, uh, and then one shoe over here, and one leg over here, right? 
And so I have this frame of reference now to start drawing my own version of the, uh, of the same picture. And I kind of already know what it's going to look like because I, uh, I practiced here by using this tracing. Another cool thing that you can do with, uh, with tracing is to explore colors really quickly. And so if you drew a picture that you really liked, so let's say that you drew this picture um, or whatever picture that you want to draw. And then you can, what you can do is you can trace it in multiple ways and go, well, I don't really know what color I want Alice's dress to be. Do I want it to be orange or do I want it to be pink? Or do I want Alice to have yellow hair? Or would I prefer Alice to have green hair? And so by quickly tracing something, you can, you can ask um, yourself what would happen or what would it look like if I drew this with Alice with um, yellow hair? Or what would it look like if I drew Alice with pink hair? Or sorry, with green hair, or let's go pink. What if I drew Alice with pink hair? And so again, you wouldn't have to draw a really accurate fast, or sorry, a really accurate slow drawing of, um, of Alice. You could draw a really quick one just to go, nope, I don't like Alice with pinky red hair. I don't like Alice with uh, blonde hair, but I do like Alice with green hair. And I do like Alice in a pink dress. So when I draw this something for keeps, I know that I want to use um, green hair and a pink dress. There are lots of different ways that you can explore tracing, and I've just explored a few. You can check out all of our videos online at artstarts.com slash explores dash online, on YouTube at Artstarts, or on our Facebook page. We'll be exploring more tracing in the coming weeks and I look forward to meeting with you then. As usual, I'm going to leave my camera running a little bit while I clean up my space because one of the ways that we practice respect is by making sure that we reset our space every week uh, and put away everything so that we can get ready to move again uh, next time. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.